Hi everyone, Kate here back with another video from Lottery Post. Now today we're gonna talk about of a bit of a doozy. And this is something that we covered on Lottery Post last week about a UK woman who is suing Camelot because they're claiming she won 10 pounds when she thinks she actually won 1 million pounds. And that's quite a bit, bit of a difference. And the reason why we're talking about this is because there's been a bit of an update that we think is actually pretty significant and worth talking about. Now, the woman who is suing Camelot, the operator of the National Lottery, her name is Joanne Parker Grennan. And back in August of 2015, she played the lottery online and bought an instant win game ticket. So this game is a digital game. So the way it's played is if the numbers on your screen in the your number section match any of the other numbers in the winning number section, those matching numbers are going to become highlighted and then you're going to win that prize associated with those highlighted numbers. Sounds easy enough, but things aren't as simple as they seem. Now the date that Joanne played the specific game was on August 25th, 2015. Why do I have that specific date in mind, you might ask? Well, that's because between August 25th and 26th of 2015, Camelot experienced a little bit of a glitch, a little bit of a computer software error that threw a wrench into the works for Joanne for this specific game. So when you play this game, the screen basically tells you if you have any matching numbers and if you win or lose, and it gives you like a cool little graphic that shows the matching numbers in your section and the winning number section turning white if they match. And yay, you won a prize. So on her screen, what she saw on her end was, there were two sets of matching numbers. One of them indicated that she won a prize worth 10 pounds, and then there was another set that indicated she won 1 million pounds. So in her mind, hey, like, it makes sense. You won a million and 10 pounds. That's what it's telling you you won. But Camelot is telling her that, no, you didn't win that 10 million pound prize. You actually only won 10 pounds. And well, as you can imagine, a lottery player looking at the game rules and saying, well, if the screen is showing me that I have two sets of matching numbers and in both sections and I win the designated prize, well, then I should be entitled to that prize. So she ended up suing Camelot for the one million pounds that she reasonably thought she was owed because there was really nothing else in front of her to prove that she was in the wrong or she made some kind of mistake. Really, in her mind, she played the game, the game showed her a result, and she thinks she won what the game is telling her she won. Now, normally when you see these types of cases, Generally, when you have one individual person going against a massive behemoth organization like the lottery, you can kind of take a guess and say that maybe that person isn't going to win. It's probably safe to say that the lottery is going to win in many, if not most cases. At the time the case began, Joanne was really confident that she was going to win, and rightfully so. But Camelot was basically saying, mm, she doesn't really have much of a case. And so then the outcome is that Joanne loses the case. The judge says that, nope, Joanne, you're not entitled to that 1 million pounds that the screen was showing you you won. You, in fact, won 10 pounds. Except this is actually one case that I personally feel very strongly for. And when I saw this in the news, I immediately thought that this was something worth talking about. There is one memorable instance where a lottery player did try to sue a lottery for a prize they thought they were owed, but really didn't have much of a case to go off. Back in 2020, there was a man from Massachusetts who tried to sue the New Hampshire lottery for a bar of gold or its equivalent in monetary value, $750,000. His reasoning was, on the game's rules, it says, reveal a $200 symbol, instantly win $200 in the bonus instructions. So he took that to mean that whatever he reveals in the bonus area of the ticket, he should win that exact same item or prize or whatever is revealed in the bonus area. Then he reveals a bar of gold symbol and sues the lottery for a bar of gold he thinks he's owed. But that's not what the instructions said. So that was an outcome that could have been predicted by pretty much anyone, and it's not really too complicated there, but I personally feel like this is a case worth looking into with Joanne. The reason why I care so much about it is because it is a digital game. It's not a physical ticket. And I will say this until I am blue in the face, as blue as the shirt that I'm wearing, that this is why we hate computerized drawings. So Camelot's reasoning for this outcome, the reason why they ended up winning in the end, is because at the time a player puts down their money for a digital game like this one, the computerized system already knows the predetermined result before it shows the graphic. So the glitch itself was just showing an extra set of matching numbers. But the computer system really predetermined that her prize was going to be 10 pounds and just 10 pounds alone. Now the problem with this, and we've talked about this many times before and we're very adamant about it, is because it's a computerized drawing. There is nothing in front of the player like a piece of paper or a scratch off ticket 
or a physical drawing that you can show and undeniably prove that this is the result. This is all happening behind the scenes, and unbeknownst to the player, Camelot is saying that this is a predetermined result, which it probably likely was. That's the way that these games mostly work. Now, in fairness to Camelot and all other lotteries that have online games, like iLottery, iGaming, etc., it's fair to say that, yes, the result is likely predetermined at the very point that a person clicks the play button and puts their money down, and that the graphic is just the entertainment part of it, it's what comes after the drawing to show you played the game. In Joanne's perspective, she saw what was in front of her, and by the game's rules, based on the graphic that she saw, she should have won that amount of money. The problem with this is that there is no way for someone like her to know that what Camelot is saying is in fact true. And while it might very well be true, that's just the way that it works, there's still no kind of transparency, there's no way for the player to verify, ah, yes, I see where you're coming from, that makes sense. You're right, I didn't win that one million pounds, I actually did win ten. And that's kind of the issue that I personally have with this. If you feel differently, please let me know, I'm curious to hear what you think. Ooh. <laughs> there is no physical way for a player to verify the results of a lottery game they played that is taking place behind a computer. It's the reality of it, and it's what happens when you put down money for a digital game, but that's why we care so strongly about digital drawings versus traditional ball drawings, is because with traditional ball drawings, you can verify the results in front of your very eyes. And there have been so many instances in the past of glitches and computerized drawings that have actually caused players to lose out on real cash. And I'm going on a bit of a rant here, and this is besides the point. I'm just really mad that this woman didn't get that one million pound prize. I actually think that she should have won it based off the game's rules. And maybe the lottery is penny pinching a little bit here, but come on. I think that one million is, it's kind of not that big of a deal for something like Camelot. I think that they should pay out that woman. And at this point, it's been taken as far as it can go in court, as far as we know right now. And... This is the result that we're going to have to deal with, and hey, I guess it's better than nothing. She did walk away 10 pounds richer, but maybe maybe not with all the legal fees. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. If you feel differently about this, or if you have any thoughts to share, and if you think that Joanne should get that one million pound prize, let us, down let us know down below. I love hearing your thoughts about all of these different stories. Anyway, from all of us at Lottery Post, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.